Hi everyone. Our next um, topic is going to be shortest paths. But it's a little bit more than, than the name might suggest. Okay, yeah, the part of short, shortest length. But we are talking here about something new. We are talking about weighted graphs. Or sometimes marked graphs. Or labeled graphs, another way. There are many words that are used here. Weighted, marked, labeled graphs. And what does that mean? So give me a very simple example. So let's start with a, a graph with four. Let's take, suppose we have this graph here. That's, that's a simple graph, right? Uh, <clears throat> by the way, it doesn't have to be a simple graph in the technical sense, but I'm going to only concentrate on simple graphs. But what is weighted or labeled or marked is that, so we have A, B, C, and D. Sometimes we give names to these edges, right? But often we don't. But it's something else now. We're going to give a label, and very often it's a number to this uh, every edge. So for instance, 5, 3, 4, and 7. This could, for instance, indicate the actual physical distance. If this, suppose A, B, C, and D are cities, this could be the physical distance between these cities. It could be also something totally different. It could be um, <coughs> the cost. <coughs> the <coughs> this could be a network that... Um, uh, uh, com, 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 neural network that connects several computers and it could be the speed at which these uh, connections work or it could be the cost of operating that, that those uh, um, lines okay so that's the kind of information that we have in a weighted graph or a labeled graph or something like that and so then we have this the notion of the cost or the, or the length of a path, and it's a bit misleading when they use, use length of a path here, that is the sum of all weights on the path. So let me give an example. So we'll go from A to B to D. That's a path of length 2. Okay, what is the cost or the length of this path? From A to B, from this is 5, from B to D is 7. So the length of this part, or the cost of this part, is uh, 12. Okay. Although, so it's a bit misleading because we also call it a part of length 2. So the word length here can mean two different things. And the textbook uses the word length kind of often, but I find it confusing because then what kind of length are we talking about? The actual length of the number of edges? or the weighted length. So we better word will be than weighted length, but I'm going to therefore very often call it the cost. Although, in some things, it, it doesn't mean the cost, right? And so, so now we can ask, what is the cheapest way, what's the least cost to go from A to D? Right? So now we have, of course, this part, which costs 12, and this cost costs 4. Costs four. Clearly, this is the shortest part, but let me change the labels a little bit. What about in this case, right? And then let's add something else here. Let's uh, add here um, uh, 10. So what is now the shortest part from A to D? From A to D. Okay, so now we're talking about certain parts. Sometimes we might be talking about circuits, but now we're talking about the part. I want to go from A to D. What is the... What are the costs, the, the various costs of going from A to D? Let's list all the possibilities now. In this, uh, we have already one here. So we have another one that is uh, A, C, D, and that cost 13. So this is the cost. So here it was 12. This was 13 because from A to C it's 3, but from C to D is rather expensive. That's 13. The other option is uh, to go directly. A to D, that's also, of course, a part, it's a shorter part, but unfortunately it costs even more, 14, right? Are there other paths? Yes, of course, I could also, no, there are no other paths, right? No, I can only this way, this way, or this way, yeah. Now, we're talking about simple paths, of course, I could also do this silly thing and then go that way, but that's clearly always going to be more expensive. So, if you're looking for the cheapest, or least cost, or the shortest, so sometimes when, say, when, when, when they say shortest, they, they talk about the length of a part, and they say cheapest when they talk about the cost of a part. And we're going to use these kind of a little bit inter, 
uh, interchangeable. Uh, so, okay. Um, so the cheapest, of course, would have therefore be this one. And if you look at so what I was trying to say, if you look for the cheapest one, it always will be a simple graph, right? It's never going to be um, a, a simple path. Sorry, a simple path. Okay. So how do we find this? But before I do this, let me give some uh, practical application here. And I have this, this taken this from the textbook here. Uh, let me see that I can enlarge this a little bit. So here is an example of uh, a, a, a practical. This is a practical problem, right? So we have these um, cities here, and we we looking the edges. There's an edge if there a particular say airline uh, has a, a a flight from that city to the other city. So you see, for instance, New York and Chicago have quite a lot of flights, but for Miami there are only two possibilities. So if you want to go, say, from Boston to Los Angeles, there's no direct flight. So you have to go um, uh, in, in a layover. Now, there are a couple of things you can do. The first thing is um, you can, what is the shortest flying? Suppose uh, it's, it, as far as the airline is concerned, they want to or spend as little as fuel cost as possible because the, the, the distance is equal to the fuel cost, say. Although that's not really true because if you have to land and, and, and take off, that is extra fuel cost. But let's not take that into account. So, so the distance, we want to have the shortest distance. So what is the shortest distance from Boston to Los Angeles flying this way? There's another question that... that that one might more likely that most what most people will look at is the shortest time it takes. Again, this is a little bit. Um, it's not a perfect example because, of course, there are the, the layover times and the, the, that you have to wait from one plane to the other. So, but let's again not take that into account. So, suppose somebody doesn't care at all whether he sits seven hours in the airport or not. What he cares about is to sit in the plane as little as possible. Okay, so that would be the second. Uh, this, this, oh, okay. Why is it not? So this would be the second one, which gives me the flight times, which, of course, are related to the distance, but not fully related, because the, in, the, in the flight times, takeoff and, and landing are also part of this thing. And then, and this is probably what most likely uh, prompts people to buy tickets or choose a particular flight, is the cost of the flights. Right, because it might be very expensive to fly. Uh, so, for instance, I, if you fly uh, from 79, 69, 89, so Boston, Chicago, Denver, Los Angeles, which probably is, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to work too much on this particular problem, but if you look at the distances, if, if this is distance on scale, which it doesn't have to be, graphs don't have to be on scale. And, and the positions are here, geographical positions, more or less, but it doesn't have to be, right? But assuming that, it seems to me that the shortest road would be this road, but it is also the most flights, and probably is also a rather long flight. It's, this is flight, this all together will take six hours, to more than six hours, whereas if you go from Boston to New York and then direct flight to Los Angeles, it only takes you four hours. So it's clear that this would be a shorter flight. So what was good in on, on for this uh, weight, distance-wise, is not a good uh, choice uh, when it comes to flight times. But it might also be a more expensive flight. It's 39 plus 129. I don't know whether that's there is anything cheaper here. Kind of doubt it a little bit, but probably is also the cheapest flight in this particular case. But, so, uh, that's one example. Um, uh, perhaps something that more is appealing to you is if you, I don't know how much, how often you take an Uber or something like that, or, um, but is, uh, Uber calculates the cost of your, your, your uh, trip in advance based on what it thinks it has, the, 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 the road it has to take. So it, it's going to calculate your cost, but it also is going to calculate the quickest route, because that's normally the least gas used and the least annoying for, for passengers. And that does not always uh, convert to in the shortest route, because the shortest route uh, might take, uh, take much longer because of traffic. And so 
So constantly these GPSs and so any GPS, not just Uber, I'm just giving this because I just took an Uber out uh, a day ago, but even if you take your own GPS on your car, it, it nowadays the GPSs, they uh, tell you, okay, this is the shortest route, but it takes longer because it's a slower road, or it's uh, it's more expensive because it's a toll, or it's more it takes longer because of uh, traffic, or it's um, it takes longer because of traffic, or it is sometimes you want to it depends on what you want to optimize so this is a, a very important problem that we constantly all these apps are constantly dealing with this problem and that is what we try to save now uh, to to uh, find out how to do this so i'm going to leave you reading a lot of the stuff and i want to jump basically to the the gist of the whole thing and is how to find the shortest path other than just listing all possible parts and um, and adding them all up and, and see which are the smallest. By the way, um, perhaps let me say this now and then I don't I can focus on the main thing. There's also the so-called traveler sales traveler salesman problem. So let me write that up. The the traveler traveling sorry traveling salesperson. In the old days, it was called sale man, but nowadays we don't want to be too gender specific. The traveling salesperson, so uh, problem. Suppose here again, looking at the the, the this particular graph here, and our, our salesperson lives in city A and has to visit every city, and come back to A. What does that mean? So that refers to a Hamilton circuit. So this is about Hamilton circuits, or perhaps a Hamilton path. If this, if the salesman doesn't, is not too much. Okay, I start in this city and end in that city. That's fine with me. I have no wife. I have no kids. What do I care? But, but suppose it he wants to return home. The most likely. So we talk about Hamilton circuit, but he wants to visit every city once. So that's a Hamilton circuit, but. There might be many different solutions, right? So he can go this way, or he can go this way, and perhaps, uh, okay, let me add here one more to make it a little bit more challenging, and uh, I have to give away to it. I can go around that way. And so the question now is, which of the various Hamilton circuits is the cheapest? Thinking, for instance, is, uh, sorry, I thought I had a pointer on, that these are costs, say, or time, or whatever it is, however you want to do, the shortest or the cheapest. So, for instance, uh, this would be uh, this would be going around, but you see, it's kind of expensive. That is twenty. Is, it seems to be thirty-five just to go around, whereas if we go this way, seven, twelve, and another three is fifteen, twenty-five. This is already cheaper, and so on. So there are different. So what you have to do is. The, the solution is basically rather stupid. List all Hamilton circuits and calculate their cost or length or whatever you call it. And then choose the smallest one, the least one. Uh, by the way, it might well be for other purposes that you actually want to collect. That you don't look for the shortest, but for the longest. It's called the shortest path problem, but it sometimes is. it might be the opposite, right? Suppose it, 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 each of these represents the number of sales you can make on, on the way, right? So then, then you want to do as much as possible, right? So it, it, one has to be careful. It's, names are sometimes given because of the most common uh, usage of it, but there are other things here. Now, we're going to focus not on this because there is no good algorithm to do this. The other than list all Hamilton circuits, and it's not obvious to find all Hamilton circuits. Remember from previous lesson, it's not even obvious to see whether there is a Hamilton circuit or not. So if there is no Hamilton circuit, the travel salesperson cannot do this. Well, he can do it, but he has to visit some city at least twice, and perhaps several ones. Okay? So that's the traveling salesperson uh, problem, which, as I said, I don't want to talk too much about, because it's not really so much we can do with, with, with it. Uh, I leave it for the a little bit for upper uh, exercises, but I want to go now to the main problem at hand, and that is um, finding. So this is the this is an algorithm that is due to a, a Dutch uh, mathematician called Dijkstra. That's how you say it in Dutch. 
I don't know exactly how the how it's how his name is nowadays pronounced in English, so I'm gonna keep saying Dextra. Dextra's algorithm. And uh, it tries to find for shorter spot. Okay, you've there is an uh, algorithm uh, explained in the book, and it actually gives the pseudocode for algorithm. It is basically the same algorithm. Well, it is the same algorithm. It is, however, very hard to work out as a for us. It's perfect for it's a pseudocode, so you can implement it. But we're not doing implementation. We're not we don't writing code, so we're going to do this for us. So how do we find the shortest part uh, in? Uh, using the access algorithm. So that's what I'm going to explain. And so the shortest part in this particular, I'm going to do it on an example, and I'm going to go from S of start to E of end. So to E end. Okay? So this is going to be my starting point, and this is going to be my ending, end point. Let's give them a little bit special color uh, just to keep track of what we're doing. Okay. Now, be aware this is not going to be quick. There is no quick solution here. What I'm going to do is so-called a greedy uh, algorithm. So at any time, I'm going to take the best option available for me. You'll see what I mean here. Now, this particular graph, uh, I copied it from um, a YouTube movie, um, is perhaps not the best because you can actually perhaps even see what the shortest part is. But again... This is, we are practicing an algorithm. It's, we are not trying to solve this very particular problem. We are trying to solve these problems in general. So we need to know how to do this in arbitrary cases where we don't see anymore what the solution is. Okay? So I am going to, again, talk about this as costs, or there could also be times, whatever you can, you can, you can think of this as tolls of various roads, whatever. Okay. So how does it start? Well, first of all, we're going to make a list of all our vertices. So here come the vertices, starting with S and ending with E, and then the rest of it, I don't care how you order them, so I'm just going to go alphabetic. A, B, C, uh, D, the E should not write, yes. Uh, what else do I have? Um, I have an F, I think I have a G, yeah, I have a G, I have an H, I have an I, a J, a K, K, an L, and that's it. Okay, so here's E. All right, so let that bring my E up there. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. Then the sec there are going to be two columns that I'm going to filling in. In here, I'm going to write the cost, and here I write the path. And actually, yes, the path. But I'll, I'll, I'll make this a little bit, I'll we'll rename it later, but just to have an idea. So what I want to do is, the algorithm that is explained in the book will give you the, sh the least cost or the shortest path, the, the smallest length, the smallest cost, whatever you call that. But it doesn't give you, it doesn't keep track of what the path is. And I want to do that. I want to keep track of the cost as well as the path. How does it work? Well... How much does it cost to go from S to itself? Well, nothing, right? That's the whole thing. If you start in S, it doesn't cost you anything. And this is the setup. Sorry, I, I, yeah, okay. I'm, oh, okay, sorry. I'm going to do this here. Because you'll see I'm going to have to fill up these columns a little bit. I'm going to start by putting the cost of everything else as infinity, Infinite. So this is infinite, 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 infinite. Let me draw lines here, otherwise I'm going to get myself. Okay. Eventually these numbers will come down, and eventually I will get the cheapest. That will. That's the idea, okay? So, how does the algorithm work? It's, it's iterates. So you... Pick the vertex, uh, pick a vertex because it could be several vertex of lowest cost. That's the first step. So which is that? Zero. In this case, it is zero. And then inspect all its neighbors. 
and I'll, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more what I mean with inspect here. So let's, I'm going to use colors to, for you to see what I'm doing, but the colors are not essential in the calculation. The calculation will all be sitting in this, uh, in this uh, table here, and I want you to solve this on a quiz, which is coming forth. Uh, you have to write me the same table, uh, basically in the same way that I see that you understand how it works. Okay, but for purposes that to follow the video, I'm going to color the neighbors in, uh, in green. Okay, so the neighbors are A, B, and C in this case. Okay, uh, I'm going to also color them here, A, B, and C. Okay, that's the, that's, inspect all its neighbors. Now, what do I have to inspect? Well, I'm going to see how much does it cost to get to A from S. Well, I have, I have the prices here, 7, and this will be 2, and this will be 3, right? So this means this infinity is no longer the, the best thing. I now know by inspecting A that I can actually get to A of, with the price of 7. And I can to get B, that cost me 2, and I can to C, that gets, cost me 3. And how I do that, and this is where I do this here. So I, I'm calling this the path, but I'm what I'm really looking for is I'm going I'm to use the previous vertex. How do I get in A? Well, in this particular case, I came from S. And for B, I came from S. And from C, I came from S. Okay? So, I repeat. The neighbors, I inspected them, and I updated. Inspect all these neighbors and update cost. I will see later better how this updating goes. Here it's basically writing down the cost, right? Infinity with 7, instead of the cost for B is now 2, and the cost for C is 3. And all of these comes from S. The first step, you don't see really what is happening. So, okay, what, what is the next thing I do? Now I say, okay, I have, if I have done all this for, for S, I don't no longer consider S. S is, is done for me. Okay, and what, in other words, I'm going to repeat this process, pick a vertex of lowest cost. I cannot pick zero, S is done, so the vertex of lowest cost will be B. Now, to keep track of all this, as I told you, I'm going to um, keep, give you, keep coloring things. I'm going to hope that I can erase the colors without erasing anything else. Yeah, there's a double B here, sorry, let me get this a little bit clear, draw this a little bit better, so, okay. Um, so I, I have to pick B, okay, so I have to also get rid of these colors, and the one that I pick, let's, let's color this uh, orange. So orange is the one, I should have done it for the first one, but okay. So orange is the one that I'm going to work with, so this is B. Bigger. Okay, and uh, green will be the neighbors of B that are still in play, because S is a neighbor in B, but it's no longer in play. Oh, right, so I should have also marked this that he is no longer in play here. Okay, so the neighbors of B are, in this case, there's still a lot of neighbors, right? because I have not really done much, right? So what are the neighbors here? Um, visually, A, D, and H. Okay, so A, D, and H. <coughs> and here we see our first update. Let's think about how, what does it cost me from B to A. So let's talk about A, right? I'm going to update A. What does this mean in this particular case? From B to A, that's cost of 3. Does that mean that what I'm going to write now is not 3, but the cost that it is, how much does it cost me to get to B, which is... Um, that's what this tells me. To get to B, it cost me 2. To get from B to A, it cost me 3. So I take this number and add this number to it. Don't look at, at anywhere else. These are the two numbers I'm considering. The cost to get to B incremented by the cost to go from B to A. That is the, a possible cost for going to A. Namely, this way. You see that, right? This, this is cost, cost together 5. Now, if this number, if this cost is lower than the current cost of A, then I replace this. Yes. 
So I replace this and I say 7, actually I can do better, 5. And not coming from S, but coming from B. So whenever you update the cost, you also update the vertex, because it means you're coming a different way. Okay? So this is, if you want, if you think of this as cities travel, this is the, where did I come from? This is where I, you come from, and this is how much it cost so far to get to A. Okay? And this is how I updated A, so I'm done with A, but let me do work the other one, to D. How much does it cost me to go to D? Well, at the moment it costs infinity. How much will it cost now? Four? No, 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 no. Remember, we have already a cost to coming from B. So it we always this cost is always the cost from the start. Okay? So from the start to go to D, the cost is the two that I have plus the four that I add. <coughs> You're following this? Okay. So this means I'm updating D to be six, and that means if you come from B. And what about H? Well, you see, it, it's uh, from B to H is 1. It cost already 2 to be in B, so it cost altogether 3. Okay? We are now done with B. So let's start with marking this for ourselves. B is now done. So B is now a red guy. And uh, let's get rid of the... Of we have no... The neighbors don't make sense anymore because the, the guy is gone. Okay? Let's see what the ver we, each time we, we, we have done with the vertex, we, we restart these two steps. It's a two-step uh, process. Right? Let me perhaps try it. One, two. Pick the vertex of lowest cost. What is the vertex of lowest cost that is still in play? Um, I actually have two choices. I can choose C or H. It doesn't matter which you choose because eventually you're going to have to choose everything. This algorithm is not skipping anything because it cannot skip anything because you never know. Right? It could be that there are, is a part that is extremely long but extremely cheap. So you have to check every single thing. So I'm going to pick one. I'll pick the first one. I see C. So C will be the one that I'm not co concentrating on. That's why it gets uh, orange. So here is where is C. Here is C. And then I look at all the neighbors of C. What are the neighbors of C? S. But S is no longer in place. So the only neighbor is L. Okay. So this is the only guy that I have to update. All right, I'll do that. Notice that it's all the way in the bottom. Is that a big... That's okay. Remember, the order in which I wrote these things is in, in, un, unimportant. As long... Even... I shouldn't have... I don't have to put S first and E last, but it just visually makes it easier for me to see when I'm done, kind of. Okay. That's really not necessary, but okay. So, um, where am I? L. Okay, I have to update L. How much does it cost to go to L? Think about it before you go on. Five. Why 5? Well, it cost already 3. Don't look here. Look here. The cost of the current cost of C, because this current, the cost of C might change. Notice, for instance, the, the cost of uh, A, if you go this way, is 7, but if you go this way, is 5. So the current cost of A is less than the actual, than this part. So be, we'll see this later. So here we have, uh, we are in C, and the cost to get to C is 3. At, at least at, at the moment. That's the best we know at the moment. So this is 3. And then we have to add another 2 to go to L. So this will be 5. You following that? But I updated something. Since I update this, I have to uh, also update the, the second column. Well, updating, there's really nothing to update because there was nothing there. So C. Okay. Good. This means I'm done with C, right? Okay, great. So let's get rid of this C and the colors here. So C is done, so that is now in red. Okay, C, you're out. So, okay, you're out. What's the next cheapest one that I have available? That's H, right? Again, I start pick vertex of flows at cost. That is, um, uh, that I do this in orange always. That is, what did I say? H, right? I'm going to take H. Where is H? Here is H. We're going to inspect all the neighbors of H. That's the second thing. Inspect all its neighbors and update cost. Okay, that's, I'll do that. So the neighbors are B, which is already out, F, and G. I repeat, B is a neighbor, but I'm not using it because it's already taken care of. <coughs> Sorry. 
Okay, let's look at the updates. Doesn't matter in which order you do. FOF actually has not been assigned anything, so the update is going to be simple. What is the update? Well, to go from H to F is 3, and H itself has also cost 3, so altogether cost 6. I repeat, I look at the cost of H plus the cost of going from H to F. Okay, so this update is consists of two things, the current cost plus the extra cost to go to your neighbor. Okay? So, uh, where is it? 6. And that is coming from H. I have to keep track of this, and you'll see why. Okay. Good. That takes care of... Oh, I didn't... Oh, that's why I got a little bit... F and G, I should have marked in here, otherwise I don't see what I'm doing. Okay. What about G? Oh, G has also not been visited yet, so it's... The cost at H is 3, the new cost is 2, so altogether 5, and it is also coming from H. Perfect. Uh, right, okay, I'm done with H, okay, I'm done with H, so H goes, I put a big red to it, uh, let's, oh, let's also get a little of the colors here, so I say these colors is just for you to see what I'm doing, right, but H is done. What's the lowest cost that is still in play? Five or six, so it doesn't matter, I'm going to pick A here. And, and and really, I don't think it's smart to pick something else because you're gonna have to do all of them anyway. This only ends when everything is crossed out except for E. Okay, so uh, I'm picking A. So here I go. Uh, don't hear this one. I pick A. So here is A. Here is A. And what are your neighbors A? Well, you have only one in on a neighbor that is still in play. That is D. Oh, sorry. I also have to erase these two guys. A lot of erasing to do, right? D. Okay, so I when you're in A, your cost is five, and you go to D, your total cost will be nine, right? Don't say seven plus four. No, no, no. The current cost at A, there is a path from S to A that costs only five. This path, but we don't need to know that. You need to know it's five. Now you're going to D, which adds another 4 to it, so altogether 9. Now this is not better than 6, so we don't need to update. We, we only update when it's less. So in other words, we are done with D. There's nothing to be done with D. Okay, so that that's, uh, takes care of uh, A, therefore. A is done, so A is done. Let's get it out of the array. So this is A, and A is done. The next one available is, the next lowest one is G. Let's take G. Okay. I'll take G. Uh, this is orange. Right? So we have 6, 6, 5, infinity, 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 5, and infinity. So that's what I mean, the lowest one, right? So I take G. Where is my G? G, 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 G. Here is G, G. And G has what neighbors? Yes. G has actually only one neighbor in play anymore. That is E. Oh, that's actually where I want to be. But just because I want to be there doesn't make that I'm done. Let's see. Okay, we go to E. Um, yeah. I, okay. As I said, I, I, I don't know where... Well, I, everything I said is right, but I want to show you how things work, even if you make... G is somehow the better choice. It doesn't matter. Um, look, these are rather long problems, and I cannot show everything that can happen. But I think it's a little bit more interesting if I show you a little bit other things that might happen. So I want to show, instead of, I could have taken G, and I will take G shortly, but I just want to show what happens if I check L first. Okay, let's take L first. Okay, because... Just just to, to show you that it doesn't have to be always alphabetical or anything like that. Okay, so let's do this. What are the neighbors of L? Well, C is out, so I and J. I and J. Oh, both have to be updated, so it's very simple. I don't have to think. They are definitely need to be better now. L currently costs 5. This is the current cost of 5. And then I just add these two costs. These two costs as I need them, okay? So this means that... Uh, J will now have cost, uh, what is the cost of J? Uh, the cost of J is 4 plus 5 is 9, and this is coming from L. And what's the other guy? I. Uh, that is, current cost of L is 5 plus 6 is 11, and this is also coming from L. 
All right. This takes care of L. So I can get rid of L. The colors. First, let's get rid of the colors. But then, and this is more important, I'm done with L. L is done, so L is out. Next, cheapest one available. Now we are a GC. At some point, I have to do everything. That's what I wanted to show you. You're going to have to do everything anyway. So I go to G. Okay, here is G. And now I get, I, we have discussed it just before, right? We have only one neighbor, E. But E has nothing, has no cost yet, so let's update the cost of E. Well, the current cost of G is 5, and it costs me another 2, so that will be 7. So this will be 7, and that is coming from G. And I'm done with that. You see, often there's not much work to do because a lot, and as you progress, more and more vertices will have been gone, right? So uh, this was G, not when I'll talk, I sometimes forget what I'm doing, so I did G. Okay, what's the next cheapest one available? One of the sixes. Let's take D. I'm taking D. So where is D? Here. Oh, I forgot to put A out here in my picture, okay? Remember, you saw A is already out, but I forgot to mark it here. Okay, D, D therefore has only one functioning neighbor, uh, neighbor or one uninspected or one neighbor that needs still to be discussed. That is uh, F. And in fact, F has, oh no, F, we have talked about F already. So, okay. So what is this? Can I, should I update or not? That's not a question. No, let me mark F also. Okay, what is the cost? If you come from D, what is your cost? Well, your cost is 6 if you add D, and then you have to add another 5, so 11. No, 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 that's definitely not better. So I'm not updating anything. And that's it, D. You didn't help me. Uh, I'm going to get rid of you. So get rid of uh, first all the colors here. And so D has now to be also uh, out. It, it's not out. It means I have used all the information. That's what it means, okay? So... Right, now look at the cheapest one, I think, I, in the meantime, right. <clears throat> um, okay, so what's the next one available? F, right, the cheapest one available is F. Uh, F. Okay, F, here is F. Okay, F, all your neighbors. Hey, you have no neighbors. So I cannot use you anymore. Sure, sure. that's it. I, there's nothing to do. So I have used everything I can. So F, um, there's no information from you coming anymore. So I, you're already done as far as I'm concerned. All right. What's the next one available? E. Uh, okay, now E we never take. Because E is where we want to get, yeah? We, we don't, so that's, the, that's why E has a special status. We're never going to update E. So when I say inspect vertex of, ver, vertex of lowest cost different from your endpoint, because the endpoint, you, 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 there is nowhere to go to the endpoint, right? So I'm not in, inspecting the endpoint anymore, but I can take, for instance, J. J is the lowest one available now. So where is J? Uh, where am I? Um, boom, 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 orange, right? So I'm picking J. There are only two. I, well, there are three available still, right? Uh, I has cost 11, J has cost 9, and K has infinite cost. So definitely I'm not going to pick that. So J, where is J? Here's my J. All right, J, what is your neighbors? Tell me your neighbors, J. J says my neighbors are I and K. Else L2, but you took, you took already care of L. Okay, so let's update the cost. Well, let's mark them first. So I and K. Uh, let's update i. Is there an update in i? i currently cost 11, but if you come from j, what's your cost then? Well, 9 to get to j, and then another 6 to go to i, that's 15. That's not better, so I'm not going to update you, so I'm done with that. So perhaps let's already get it out, out here. Now what about k? Yeah, clearly k is going to be better than infinity, right? So the cost to go to j is 9, plus another 4, that is 13. All right, so that's everything that I can use so far. So, Jay, you're done too, as far as I'm, I'm concerned. You can go to sleep. That is J. Here is J. What's the smallest one left? Not E. That's I. So, I'm looking at I. 
Uh, I is uh, sorry that should be orange. Okay, I. So what is your neighbor? He's only one neighbor. That is um, K. So all right. So let's see what I can update K and what is this? How does this work? Well, the current cost of I is eleven. If you go through this part, it costs you fifteen, which is not better than thirteen. So I'm not gonna update anything. So again. No action taken here, so k i except that i is now also exhausted. All the information of i we used. Finally, we have k. Okay, so what this particular means, so just, just for what this means, that so far the cheapest way to go to k is 13. <clears throat> okay, okay, we're in k, so k, there's k, uh, okay, here is k. What are your neighbors? K? Oh, sorry, I forgot to mark my I because we are done with I, right? So I sometimes forget that. Okay, there's only one neighbor left. That is my my intent. My oh, and again also forgot to to mark G. I'm so sorry. I keep forgetting that. I marked it at least on the table. The rest is just visually for you to follow here. Okay, so what can I update the value here? That's of course crucial now because. Can I get to E cheaper? Well, you see, this is not going to happen, right? Because it already cost thirteen. To get to K and then from K to E costs another five, so eighteen. So it's not an update. So sorry, K, you you tried, but you are not playing with me. You're not doing anything for me. So uh, this goes out, this goes out, and I'm done. What does this tell me now? This if you, it stops when E is the last vertex remaining. This is the case, right? We pick a vertex of lowest cost different from the end. We inspect all its neighbors and update the cost. We have did all that. So we know that the lowest cost is going to be 7. Sorry. This is going to be the lowest cost. So the lowest cost is 7. But more importantly, what is the, the, the path that gives me the lowest, lowest cost? Well, this we find uh, go backwards. from Start from E and go backwards. Okay, you're in E, so we start in E, so I'm going to write it backwards, E. E comes from G, so this is G. Look at G, where does G come from? G comes from H. Where does H come from? H comes from, oh boy, I forgot to mention where H comes from. H came from B. Sorry guys, I'm, I forgot to mention this. Please, you have to look at this. This is so important if you miss this, uh, because... I'm explaining a lot and coloring, so that's why I get, if you do it yourself, you're paying much more attention, right? So for you, sorry about that. So H, to, to the, the, the update that I had for H here was when I, I looked at B, that the only place that I can come from anyway, okay? So <clears throat> that's, uh, also I forgot to mention from K, right? From K, this was coming from... Uh, from J, see, sorry, there's a couple of information that I missed here to write, okay, okay, sorry, uh, so from H, H, I came from B, okay, and B, where I come from, B, I come from S, okay, so the shortest part is actually rather short here, and perhaps you already said, uh, it's not perhaps the best choice I made here, uh, you see already from S, H, this, this will be the this is clearly a path from S to E, and it is the one with shortest cost. I'm going to do another one in the review where perhaps the, the numbers are a little bit um, more challenging, I mean, give, give it a bit more, more, less obvious, okay? And also, I'll try, I'll, I'll try to do next time to not... This is why it's so important to have this, because this lets you go backwards. This tells you how you find the actual path, okay? Because you always, you say... To, so, for instance, um, we didn't do much of updates exactly. I see only one actual update here in A. So, originally, it was we came from S to A, but that cost 7. So, if you have to go to A, it would be better just to uh, go via B. And so, this, is the, this tells you, if you, the shortest path from S to A is not the direct path, but it is from A to B, and then from B comes from S. Yeah, so A comes from B, and B comes from S. Yet, so you, you have to read this previous vertex as comes from. Okay? 
All right, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to do a review with some uh, another of these examples, and there will be a quiz on this algorithm.